Hi everyone and welcome! In a previous video we covered the theory behind IAM Identity Center, what it is and why you would want to use it. In this video we're actually going to go set it up and use it by working through the five steps here. So the first thing we need to do is enable Identity Center. This is not done for you by default in your account, but it's easy to do. So back to the console. You just want to hit the big orange button here to enable, but just a couple of notes first. I am in US West 2 right now in Oregon. You can only enable this in a single region. So if I were to enable it in Oregon and then I'd want to enable it, say in North Virginia, I would have to disable it in Oregon. And I am going to touch on that at the end of the video, how to basically undo everything that we've done here. So if you're just testing this out and you're not quite ready to commit, that's totally fine. This is not permanent. But let's start with enabling. Now Identity Center does require AWS organizations. If you have one set up already, that's cool. But if you don't, you can create the organization as part of this same step of enabling Identity Center. So let's go ahead and do that. An organization, again, is just a collection of accounts. There we go. Let's give it a minute. On this page, you might sometimes get an error message here where the enable button used to be that will say rate exceeded. I've had that happen a couple of times. It seems like it creates the organization, but it doesn't go all the way through with enabling Identity Center. If that happens to you, just refresh the page, and then you should see a button that says Finish Enabling. Click on that, and then once that finishes, you should drop into a page like this. So it looks like everything worked here. We've got Identity Center up and running, and we should have the AWS organization created as well. So let's just go check that really quickly. I'll open up a new tab. And go to Organizations. Here we go. And here's my organization. So it automatically creates a root for you. And then if you just have the one account, it will make that account your management account. So it's totally valid to have an organization with just a single account. And that's what I have here. It looks like everything worked. Back to Identity Center. We've got some recommended setup steps here. And step one is to choose your identity source which happens to correspond with my next step in the slides as well. Your identity source in Identity Center defines where your users and groups are managed. And if we click on the link here, scrolling down, by default when you enable Identity Center, it's going to make your source the Identity Center directory. And that's where you would create your users and groups, assign their level of access, and so on. But if you don't want to use the built-in directory here, you can come over to Actions and Change Identity Source. If you have something set up like an Active Directory or another external provider, say Okta, for example, then you could set those up here. We are just going to go with the built-in Identity Center directory, so I'll just cancel out of that. But that's where you would set up the source. So now in that Identity Source, let's go create a user. And we can do that up here on the left navigation. Now users here are not the same as users that you create in IAM. To create an IAM user, you can still log into an individual account and go create the users inside of that account. But here Identity Center kind of sits outside of your accounts, if you will, at a higher level. And here we're creating a user that could be used across multiple accounts. So kind of at a different level, slightly different. They do represent a user, like a first name, a last name, an email address, and so on. But they're really just at different levels. So here in Identity Center, we will add a user, give it a username. I'll say Amber AWS Identity. For passwords, we could send an email with instructions to set it up. But I'm going to generate a one-time password that I could share. And then I'll enter the email address and confirm first and last name. And that will automatically fill in the display name. Scrolling down, there are other optional things that you can set here as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and go next. We'll skip the groups for now and say next, review everything, and then add user. 
So we've got our one-time password here. We've got the access portal URL and the username. I'm going to go ahead and copy these over to Notepad because we will need them later. All right, so we have a user. Now let's create a permission set that will actually allow them to do things. Permission sets are stored in Identity Center, and they define the level of access that users and groups have on an AWS account. They're basically a template of IAM roles, if you're familiar with those. And we're going to start with a permission set for admins. So back to Identity Center, let's come into permission sets here on the left. We don't have any at the moment, so let's create a permission set. Now we can use predefined permission sets, which give you some nice options for common roles. We're going to go with admin access, but there's different things like billing, network administrator, power user, and so on. And then you can also do the custom set, which will let you pick and choose and have a lot more control. But we're just going to go with the predefined one for administrator access and then say next. Some additional optional details you can fill in. There's also a session duration here that you can control, but we'll go next, review, and create. Okay, now we have a user and a permission set. Let's grant them access to an account so they can log in and have the permissions based on the permission set. To do that, we want to come over to AWS Accounts. And here it's going to pull from accounts in our organization. Now, again, at the moment, I only have one account, which is totally valid. And you can do all of this with just a single account. In the real world, though, your organization will probably have dozens or even hundreds of accounts. And so you would want to pick the one to which you want to assign administrative access. For me, it's just the single account. And then we need to pick the Identity Center users or groups who can access that account. So assign users or groups. This will default you to the Groups tab. So come over here to Users. And we have just the one that we created. We'll say Next. Then we need to tie everything together with the permission set. So the administrator access that we chose. And Next. Review and Submit. Configuring your account, do not leave this page, here we go. And we've provisioned the account successfully and applied the updated permissions. Excellent. Now for the moment of truth, let's see if all of this worked by logging in through the AWS Access Portal. When we created a new user, the Access Portal URL displayed, and I copied that into Notepad. But if you didn't do that for some reason, you can always get to it back here in Identity Center, come into the dashboard. And then over here on the right, the Access Portal URL. I'll just open that up in a new tab. And then let's log in. So my username, this is the Identity Center user that we created. So Amber AWS Identity. And next. And then the password, remember that I used a one-time password that I'll just grab from here and sign in. We do have to set the new password now. Set new password. And voila, here is my one account. If I had multiple accounts, they would all show up here. And if I had set up external applications, I could get to those from here as well. But for your accounts, if you just click on them, then you can get to the Management Console. So I'll open that up. This will take me to the console homepage, which should look familiar. I can go about my work like I normally do. Up here on the top, though, you'll see administrator access. So this is my permission set that I'm logged in as. And then the Identity Center username, Amber AWS Identity. So it's easy to see as I'm going throughout my day who I'm logged in as just by glancing on the top right here. And then if I need to log into other accounts throughout the day, I would just come back here, choose the account, and so on. And since we're here, one other thing to show you, the command line or programmatic access. So clicking on that will give you various keys and credentials for the different operating systems here. 
And you'll notice that all of these say short-term credentials. So short-term, short-term, short-term. That's one benefit of using Identity Center. These credentials are temporary, so you don't have keys that are lying around and getting out of date and getting checked into source control or something crazy like that. These are just temporary, so much more secure option here. And this is where you're going to access everything. All right, so those are the basics of getting Identity Center set up as well as your organizations. But if you were just testing things out and you're not quite ready to go down this path, let's go undo everything that we did. So coming into Identity Center, back to that tab. Now, one thing you will notice after you sign in using your Identity Center user in other tabs, it will ask you to reload or sign in again on other tabs that you had open. So this original tab, I was logged in as my root user. Let me go close out of these other tabs and I'll sign out of my Identity Center user. I'll close these other tabs. And then back here in my original tab where I was doing my setup work, let me reload. It has still got me logged in as my Identity Center user. I'm going to sign out of this as well. I don't want to be signed in as Identity Center user and then disable Identity Center. So I'm actually going to sign back in as my root account. You could also do this with an IAM admin account too, which would be a best practice. But now I'm back in as root. So let me come into Identity Center again. And we basically want to disable this, undo everything that we did. And to do that, we'll come into settings here on the left. And then down here to the management tab, and scrolling down, delete IAM Identity Center configuration, delete. You cannot undo this operation, so you'll have to just check that you're okay with everything. We're going to delete all users and groups, user assignments, and cloud applications, which we didn't set up, but all account permission sets and applications as well. We want to blow everything away, so we'll just confirm and confirm. Now, this is not going to delete any of your IAM user accounts. These are just the Identity Center accounts that we set up new from scratch in this video. Now, the other thing to take care of is the AWS organization that got set up. So let's come into Organizations. And we want to delete the organization. Now, to delete the organization, you can't have any member accounts. So at the moment, I just have the root account and the management account. And from here, I could delete the organization. If you had member accounts under this as well, like a dev account or a test account or something like that, you would need to delete those. And to do that, you would just select the account and then under actions, remove from organization, that option should be available to you. And then once you do that, you can come into settings over here on the left and then scrolling down, delete the organization. Now, deleting the organization is not going to do anything to that single account. It will just take it out of the organization, but it doesn't actually delete the account. You can continue working with the account just as you always have by logging into it. It just removes it from the organization structure. So don't worry, you're not actually deleting that single account. We're just deleting the organization structure that was sitting around it. Okay, so that's how to set up Identity Center as well as organizations, and then how to undo that as well. If you found that helpful, give me a big thumbs up on the video, and also think about subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.